Greetings, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to talk about the health and wealth prosperity gospel. But first, you might be thinking to yourself, Hey, Mike, why do you look so funny? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Earlier today, I was shaving. And in the process of shaving, as I usually do, I was trying to shape my goatee. My signature goatee that uh, I almost always have and makes me look so very distinguished. Uh, in the process, I kind of goofed and I uh, made it look a little too weird. I tried to salvage it, couldn't accomplish it, so I shaved it off. Figured I'd start over. Uh, usually when I do that, I shave the whole works off, but this time I figured, well, maybe I'll keep the mustache and just kind of see how I look for a while. Uh, if I look too silly, just say, hey, Mike, you look really like a, a real goofball with a, just the mustache and you should shave it off. Yeah, that's fine. You know, whatever. You can tell me that. But uh, otherwise, you know, I just kind of hate having a bare face. I think with uh, my bare face, I just look, I don't know, like a big round bare face and and uh, so for now I have a mustache but we'll see anyway on to our subject okay so on the issue of prosperity um, let's consider some things from the Bible uh, let's start off in the book of Philippians chapter 4 starting at verse 12 tells us this I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I do everything through him who gives me strength. This is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he's saying that in his life as a Christian, he has had to endure hardship. He has had to endure hunger, and he has also, at times, been well-fed and taken care of and done well. Um, he's had to deal with both situations. But, he says, he's learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. This is a great lesson to us as Christians because situations can change from day to day. Today you may have a great paying job with lots of benefits. Tomorrow you may lose that job and uh, your nice pay and your benefits are going to go away and you're going to have to learn to live some other way. And it's not that God isn't going to take care of you. I mean I've experienced in my life the same thing that Paul's talking about here. You know, I've experienced times where things have gone well, and I've also experienced plenty of times when things have not gone well. Um, I was pretty poor growing up, you know. Uh, we definitely had the experience of not knowing where the rent was coming from or not knowing how we were going to buy our next meal. But, uh, you know... We always trusted God, and God always provided for us. And um, we're going to look at another verse in a moment here that's going to make exactly that point. Um, that God provides, and He takes care of our needs. Now, what separates the true gospel from the prosperity gospel is that they would have you believe that God not only takes care of our needs, but He's also very concerned with taking care of our wants, so long as we, you know, are, are, are doing our share with the money, you know, putting it in the, in the church coffers there, you know. Uh, as long as we take care of the church, God's going to take care of us abundantly. Now, it's true that Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. There's no question about that. But there's nothing there that says that abundant life is about money. In fact, uh, you may remember from one of my previous videos I did it on the tithe that the tithe was not about money. And therefore, since the tithe was not about money, neither therefore need the blessings be about money. So, uh, 
all these issues of uh, giving to get that people seem to want to draw out of the Bible, they're not about money. Now, God realizes we need money because money, you know, makes our world go around in many ways. And, you know, God will provide for us. He will take care of us. Um, but, you know, Violet Kitty did a response to this where she pointed out that there's many Christians living in other places in the world that live in extreme poverty. And those Christians have to trust God to get by day to day. And there's Christians right here in America who uh, are not living in that kind of extreme poverty, but they're certainly living in poverty enough where they too have to trust God just to get by day to day. Now the people who push the uh, health and wealth prosperity gospel would have you believe that those Christians suffer from a lack of faith or they suffer from a lack of giving. Um, but instead of just calling this the health and wealth prosperity gospel, let's get down to the root of what it really is. The root of what it really is, is the Word of Faith movement. And the Word of Faith movement was brought upon us uh, primarily by a man named Kenneth Hagin, and was perpetuated even further by his buddy Kenneth Copeland, and in our modern day is being expounded upon in so many ways and areas by the lovely Benny Hinn. Um, this movement is not only about health and wealth and prosperity, it's also about false manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The two go hand in hand. They're intrinsically tied together. Um, one does not go without the other. And you will see all of these men, well, uh, uh, who are still alive anyway, teaching these things continually today, even though at times they've been confronted about these teachings and they've repented of making these kinds of teachings at times, but they still continue to do it, especially Benny Hinn on that point. Um, the falseness of the prosperity gospel and the falseness of the false manifestations of the Holy Spirit are two things that Benny Hinn has both pushed and retracted and pushed again. But, uh, such is the nature of false prophets. Now, I should also like to say that I believe that the Word of Faith movement, this health and wealth prosperity gospel, is uh, indeed a cult. And why do I consider it a cult? I consider it a cult because in many ways they redefine the very nature of God and the purpose of Christ. They also uh, surround their movement around the teachings of some particular founding members, namely Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, and today, like I say, also very much Benny Hinn. Uh, I'd also like to point out that there are some people out there who have done some excellent exposés on this movement and its people, and um, among them are the late Dr. Walter Martin, who was the original Bible Answer Man. He did some excellent, excellent work uh, exposing uh, the true nature of the Word of Faith movement. Now, Dr. Walter Martin is no longer with us, and at the time that he was alive, he did not consider yet the Word of Faith movement to be a cult. Now, he's been dead about 18 years, and I do suspect that if he were still alive today, his opinion on that probably would have changed by now. Um, his successor, well, let me just say, uh, Dr. Walter Martin, Martin founded the Christian Research Institute, um, and his successor to the presidency of that institute is a man named Hank Hanegraaff. Now, Hank Hanegraaff has written a couple books, uh, one of which is Christianity in Crisis, the other is Counterfeit Revival. Both of these books are also excellent exposés on the problems of the Word of Faith movement. And Hank Hanegraaff himself has come under some criticism um, for uh, the work he's done as the president of the uh, Christian Research Institute and also some of the ways in which he's handled their finances. Uh, there are some issues there that if you look up this guy you're probably going to see some some references to uh, criticisms about him. 
a lot of that stuff uh, has not been resolved to my understanding, but um, I've, I've studied these works of his, the Christianity in Crisis, uh, the Counterfeit Revival. Uh, regardless of anything with this guy, I can tell you that those two books are very, very good. They're well done, solid exposés of what's wrong with the Word of Faith movement, the Health and Wealth Prosperity Gospel. Now, I'd also like to point out to you a website, which is www.deceptioninthechurch.com. This is an excellent, excellent website that... Uh, has done just all kinds of work on so many different uh, leading TV evangelists out there uh, demonstrating the associations they have to the Word of Faith movement, to the Health and Wealth Prosperity Gospel, to also these false manifestations of the Holy Spirit, which are something that uh, Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, have also been very much a part of. There's also a man out there named Rodney Howard Brown who led something called uh, the, the Laughing Movement or the Laugh Revival, which was this idea that the Holy Spirit would take control of these spirit-filled Christians and cause them to burst out in laughter. And this was a form of basically uh, um, healing to the Christians, you know, by the Holy Spirit. They, you know, just caused them to laugh uncontrollably. And, and I went to one of these so-called revivals that this Rodney Howard Brown did one time, and, and it was horribly disruptive, with people breaking out in laughter all over the place, and very unorganized, very disorderly. And uh, even while he was trying to give his message, people were busting out laughing, and, and very disruptive. And, and, and in the midst of all this, he says, if you're here tonight... And you do not believe that what you're seeing is from the Holy Spirit, that it's truly from God, then the wrath of God is upon you. Yeah, the man actually said that. And I'm sitting there, and the whole time I've been watching this, and I've just been feeling this horrible feeling, this, uh, this uh, grievous oppression over all of this, that, oh man, this is so not from God. And then the guy goes and says that, you know, to which I'm like, okay, we got a, a real loony here. Okay, um, so anyway, uh, this whole laughing laughing in the spirit thing, it's degraded into other things. Um, actually, before there was laughing in the spirit, there was being slain in the spirit, that too. Not a biblical manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That goes back to the early 1900s that people have been doing that one. But there's other ones that have come along, like being drunk in the Holy Spirit, and, and other things. They just come up with all these different things, uh, going into uh, spirit-induced trance and whatnot. You know, all these things that people say the Holy Spirit is doing to them, uh, as the Holy Spirit ministers to them. Um, nothing biblical about it. Um, very much uh, false teachings about the nature and work of the Holy Spirit. And so I wanted you to know about how these things are tied together, and I wanted to give you some resources that you can look into to find out the truth about these things. And finally, I want to give you one more scripture. Uh, this one is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, starting at verse 6. It says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And this is the charge I make. Those who are part of this health and wealth prosperity gospel are teaching a false gospel. And because they are teaching a false gospel, they have indeed wandered from the faith, just as it says in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And with that, I will say God bless. Take care until next time.